Okay, so we're gonna start recording. So one more time, remember to please, when you come in tomorrow, go ahead and come in through the security entrance, make sure you announce yourself, make sure you have an ID, uh, park in parking lot F, walk in through building eight. Um, you come in, come straight to the classroom. Um, when you leave, uh, you need to let me know you're leaving. You need to immediately exit campus. Um, unfortunately, there's no socializing, uh, masks at all time. You will not need any particular tools tomorrow. Um, maybe, um, maybe something like a, um, a flashlight, right? Maybe a flashlight, make sure you bring your own writing utensil. Um, maybe some, um, uh, maybe a, uh, uh, notebook, okay. But besides that, you really don't need any 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 hard tools, right? Or or tools. Excuse me, I got a message from one of the students. Okay. Oh. Trust me, this is school related. Okay, not. I'm not on social media. Okay. All right, uh, before we get started, uh, questions, comments, anything? Um, this is gonna be a bumpy semester, I'll tell you right now. Um, and it's, it's, it started out bumpy and, and it's getting bumpier as we speak. Where I live, we're on a notice for evacuation. So uh, I, keep getting, I keep getting my um, updates on my phone and saying, you know, uh, in case you need to evacuate, be ready. So I'm a little bit on pins and needles myself. Um, I'm, I'm more worried about my cars in my garage, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> so I just made, I, 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 I made sure I put my, my, uh, my 55 together to, uh, to, to, so it could be driven. Um, I was working on that yesterday as well, late. I got, uh, I got, I got to put a solenoid back on and some other stuff later on today. I just want to make sure that's good to go. I, I, I actually might move it just in case, um, cause I can't drive, um, four cars at the same time, right? Um, so uh, anyways, um, and then of course my, my pets and my family, of course, but, uh, but, but, but my, my cars are, are dear to me. Okay, so, um, okay guys, so uh, yesterday, um, let me see what else I need to talk about. Um, I, need, I need to talk to some of you. Um, I, uh, there's a couple of you, I think, that have not done the uh, COVID quiz that needs to be done and a few other assignments, so please don't fall behind. And I'll say that because uh, I'm selfish, right? I'll, I'll just be honest, because I, I don't like to have to be going back and grading homework and all that kind of stuff. I like to stay kind of you know, with you guys. Um, and, and, and I have my technical challenges as well, okay? So this is the first time that I've taught on a, uh, on a distance education platform. Trust me, I'm certified, okay? They certified us in the summertime, so I, I at least have that under my belt. But, um, but um, I'm, I'm learning things as we go, okay? So, so I'll be patient, you be patient, and we'll have, we'll have a good semester. We'll have a good semester, okay? All right, um, so with that, um, I will be emailing you some of the students that, um, that have not, uh, that need to complete some, some, uh, requir some requirements or some tasks especially those who need to complete some tasks before they come onto campus tomorrow, okay? Because there are a couple. And again, if you need to talk to me after, just, just hang out after the meeting, or again, if you need to talk to me um, by, the, by phone um, or you know, email, you, you want a Zoom meeting, whatever you want, uh, just let me know, okay? And, and uh, just keep me communicated, okay? All right, um, so this meeting is scheduled till 11.15. I don't think that we'll go beyond that, okay? I'm gonna to try to make it brief, uh, try to make it plain, uh, let you know where we're at, okay? So let's get started with the lecture. So yesterday we start, We were talking about, um, and I'm just gonna keep it like this for a while. Yesterday we were talking about several, uh, we, we started with the overview, overview of, the, uh, of the program and you guys were to fill out that worksheet and it talked about like the, the, the uh, requirements for proper combustion, it talked about the, um, uh, how to create power, okay? Talked about the, um, the, the fuel system, the four requirements of a fuel system. Um, so, and then we went on to talk about the uh, emissions, okay? And ignition, okay? So basically what we're doing here is we're, we're giving you a preview of things that are gonna be covered during this semester, okay? So all those topics 
are going to be covered in th this semester. This is just an overview to kind of get you thinking about these systems and, and, and how complex each of the systems is. But to tell you the truth, what we're trying to do is, is what I'm trying to do is set you up to think of uh, in a diagnostic manner, okay, to try to think of it in a diagnostic manner, to try to, to, try to, to, uh, to do things systematically, okay, and to do things uh, with purpose, okay. Um, I, I help out people in shops, you know, especially when, um, when, when I first started teaching, I, I, I'd help out people in shops, I still do, and I would, um, I would visit their shops and, you know, they would say, man, I've been working on this car for a week, or I've been working on this car for, you know, three or four days. And, um, you know, they would tell me what was, you know, what the symptoms were. And then they would tell me, yeah, I, I'm, I, I think it might be the, uh, the ignition system, um, but I'm also checking the fuel pump and, and, and I'm going to do a compression test. And I was like, wow, that's, that's all over the place, isn't it? That's, that's kind of, that's too much for me. I couldn't even like think about that, right? I'm simple. I got to do one thing at a time. And what, what I do is I try to eliminate, right? I eliminate um, what it's not, okay? Um, I don't know about you, but if I was, if I, if I had that kind of, um, uh, and, and let me just tell you, this, this is a, a this, this happened actually, uh, well, it, it was last summer, but, but uh, the situation where a gentleman, he called me and um, He's, he's kind of a new tech. He kind of trade, changed careers and became a technician. He owns his own shop now, um, but he's, he, uh, he, he, he learned the trade late, okay? But that, that doesn't mean anything. Anyways, he calls me and he says that this car that he has is, is just, it's just um, idling rough. Um, and then off of idle, it seems okay, but at, at idle, it's just, it's just running very rough. It has, it has what, what I call a dead miss, okay? In other words, you can, you can, plainly see the engine sitting there and, and it's got a misfire. And it, it's a V6 configuration, just so you know. V6, V6 configuration, smaller V6, doesn't matter what kind of vehicle. Um, and so, so, so that's what he told me. He goes, I think that I might be having uh, an ignition problem um, or I might have a fuel problem. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check fuel pressure or I'm, I might have, you know, um, or, or I think the engine just might be bad. I was like, wow, that, that's a heck of a, of, of a thing to deal with, right? You got all these issues going on. You should try to eliminate some. So um, my way of, of, of diagnostics, right? And everybody, everybody's gonna have a different diagnostic path, okay? Mine's not 100% correct. Yours is not 100% correct. And these, this gentleman's was definitely not 100% not correct. So what I would have done, that's just, you know, and, and this is what I, what I told him, and this is what we did, is I would have made sure that the power plant, the engine was, was uh, at, it was functioning correctly, right? That we had a solid power plant. That's what I call the engine, right? The power plant. And the ways that I do that is one thing that I do right off the bat is when I crank the engine, I can hear it, right? I can, I can hear the engine crank and it should, it should sound, you know, it should sound nice and even that the, the crank should come out nice and even. And, and, um, and I can tell that it's what I, what's called rhythmic, right? The sound is rhythmic. Uh, it does not sound like it's like it's sporadic, okay? Or or in music they call it staccato, right? It's not uh, it's 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 not uh, long and short pauses. It's nice and rhythmic, okay? Um, and basically it was okay. It cranked over and it, it was rhythmic when it, when it cranked over. But then another thing that I do right off the bat when I'm di diagnosing an engine is if it's especially if it's something like. That, that, I, that I can see it's got a vacuum port somewhere that I can plug in a vacuum gauge, I check it, right? So I asked him, what's, what's the engine vacuum, right? What, how much vacuum is this engine producing? And, and if you, from engines, you probably know this, that engine is a, a good definition of how much, how tight that engine is, how it seals. And he looked at me like I was asking him an uh, algebra question, right? Because he looked at me like a deer in the headlights, like, what? I said, what's the engine vacuum, right? It's one of the cheapest diagnostic tools you can buy, a vacuum gauge, easy to hook up. Nowadays, we, get, we do it electronically as well. You guys are going to learn both methods, or I'm sure you already learned the method with the, with the gauge. And, um, and he said, um, well, I don't, I don't know, uh, but it's probably okay. Well, that's not a good answer. So I said, well, let's check the engine vacuum, okay? And um, it took us, 
I'm t I'm, and I'm not exaggerating here, it took us 20 minutes to find a vacuum gauge, to find a vacuum line, to find a T and a fitting to connect that vacuum gauge, okay? And let me tell you what happened. As soon as we, we hooked up the vacuum gauge, we started the engine, and when the engine started to, was idling, and it had that, and it had that misfire, right, that dead miss, the, um, the vacuum gauge was going like this. The vacuum gauge was, was, it was, it was nice and high, all right, at about, at about 18, 19 inches of vacuum, but it was going like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Can anybody tell me what that means or, or, or what, what I should be concerned about? Or is that good? Is that what it should be doing? The engine's running. Maybe it should be doing this when the engine's running, right? The, the needle was going back and forth between, I would say, maybe 16 to 18, 16 to 19, but it was going... Very, very rapidly like this. Okay. What do you think? What do you think was going on? Can anybody answer that? First of all, just answer. Is, can somebody just answer me? Is that normal? Is that what it should be? No. Um, no. Is it? Is it maybe misfiring? It it, 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 it has a misfire. But what's? But so, so so yeah. So right off the bat, I know just by looking at that gauge, that's not normal. Game over. Stop. Right. Stop right now because something is wrong. We need to figure this out. Okay. So. If you, if you understand by looking at a vacuum gauge that that's not normal, that you're, you're already ahead of the game because this gentleman didn't, right? Okay, and, and I'm not putting him down. I'm just saying that's a real basic skill that he kind of went over, right? He, he skipped that part because I'll tell you what he, this gentleman had done to this point. This gentleman had already replaced the, uh, a, it was an older vehicle, so it had a distributor cap, it had a rotor, had ignition wires, it had spark plugs, okay? He replaced all of that. Not only that, the belts and hoses were, were pretty old, so he convinced the customer to get to replace that. So this gentleman had, we're talking like $500 in parts, okay, in parts. Yeah. And, um, and the car was exactly the same as when it came in. So, so again, if you understand that there's something wrong with that engine because that vacuum gauge is fluctuating up and down, right? Because we know it should be, stead, it should be steady, right? And it should be at about 20 inches of vacuum, give or take a couple of points. That's fine. But about 20 inches of vacuum, I always say, just say 20, right? What should it be at? 20. Keep it simple. And, but no, that needle was going back and forth at 19, which is still good. 18, still good. But it was going like this. It was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That always means, okay, that always means you have a problem in the valve train. Something's wrong with the valves, okay? It could be a broken uh, spring, it could be a, a, a burnt valve, it could be a bent valve, it could be a valve, it doesn't matter, right? It's in the valve train, okay? In most shops, that's enough to stop there and then, and then sell the customer, right? Or inform the customer that they need a valve job, right? The, 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 that head, the culprit head needs to be taken off and most shops don't do this anymore. So it's going to be need to take it to, to a machine shop. The machine shop will then evaluate the head and they'll come back to you and say, okay, it needs a complete um, 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 valve job all the way across. It's going to cost you $300, right? Or it just needs that one valve and see, it's only going to be $150, something like that, right? So, so that's what should have been done. Okay, so that's kind of the things that we're going to learn in this class. Okay, that's, that's some of the things we're going to learn in this class to be able to evaluate something like that. Okay, um, long, what ended up happening with that, with that scenario is that, that, uh, is that the, uh, the, the technician and the shop owner, he's the, same, he's the same person, the technician and the shop owner ended up having to, um, um, to keep the customer from complaining uh, to the Bureau of Automotive Repair, he ended up um, giving them all free labor, okay? He just charged them just for the parts, right? Because it was his mistake, you know? And, and he, he didn't really need a tune-up spark plugs for, to fix that, that problem. Now, did the car need it? Well, maybe yes, maybe no, but it shouldn't have been sold for that problem, okay? So, so just so you guys understand how complicated it can get very quickly. So again, that's some of the diagnostic skills we're gonna use here. And, some, and, and that's an example of the diagnostic path that we should be thinking about. How am I gonna diagnose this vehicle, right? And, and somebody commented on, on your comments that you wanted to learn about, uh, well, a lot of you did, that you wanted to learn about, about diagnostics, right? And, and I think diagnostics is like the best part of fixing a car, right? Like, like I love um, being challenged, right, with, um, 
being challenged with 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 uh, with fixing a car. I I I won. I got a, a treadmill that way. Okay, just a few weeks ago, my neighbor my neighbor said that he had he had a car. <laughs> he had a car and and uh, and in and the shop the, the the shop that he took it to um, was giving him the runaround. Long story short, um, he asked me if I would diagnose it and diagnose it correctly that he'd give me a treadmill because I'd, I'd asked him about a treadmill he had in his garage. So I went over and I, and I, and I did a test with a scan tool and I found out that just with a scan tool and I found out it had a, a faulty uh, converter. So he said, are you hundred percent sure? I go, I'm hundred percent sure. So he went, had the converter put on and the code went away, never came back. So I have a brand new, well, not brand new, but new to me, new treadmill mm -hmm. in my backyard. So now I just need the motivation to go get on it. Right. Okay. All right, guys. So let's, uh, Let's get started here. Um, um, so um, the we talked. We also talked about automotive pollutants yesterday. We talked about the gases. Okay, um, and I think one of the, the sticky points is is about the uh, is about the hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and, and oxides of nitrogen. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch to my I'm gonna switch to my whiteboard. It's actually not a whiteboard, but it's uh, the best I can do under these circumstances, and. I'm gonna I'm gonna review about the gases, okay? Because that's a sticky point, and and this is it. This is a um, bar level one course, so we need to we need to review that. Okay. Any questions, comments before we move forward? Anybody working on anything interesting? Like what? Like uh, any, any diagnostic issues? I I like to maybe sometimes talk about. Whoops, sorry. Um... I like to sometimes talk about somebody's working on something interesting in the shop or things like that, or any, anything going on in the automotive news. Typically in my classroom, the, the first thing we do when we walk in is we have announcements and news, and we talk about any kind of automotive news, something going on in the industry. Um, but yeah, so if, it, if you guys ever want to talk about things like that when we do our, when we do our, our Zooms, okay? Uh, oh. Unfortunately, the Zooms are going to be few and, uh, few and far between, um, but whenever we do a Zoom. Okay. What do you got, Lauren? Oh, no, I was just because... Um... I uh, know the Ford Bronco dropped um, a couple weeks ago, so I'm, I'm right. kind, of, kind of excited about that. So that's yeah. cool. <laughs> check. I want to yeah, check that out, huh? Yeah, I'm. I'm just waiting for it to hit the dealership, so maybe I, I can uh, ride in one for free. You know, so. um, it's crazy how technology nowadays is. Is um, the cars they're making are, are 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 you know so powerful, and and you know people ask me like what what's the what's the best car out there what car should i buy i go you know what it's really your your preference right because everybody's yeah. making a good car you know they are I, I can't say all the you know these you know back in the day you can say well these cars are, have you know real low horsepower or the, you know nowadays heck it's all it's all about what do you want like if you, you want a sports car then you know there's a few to choose from if you want uh an suv there's plenty of suvs to choose from it's it's more about your preference it's not about who's making a good car who's making a bad car that that's that's a um, um, uh oh, I just did you just, did you just somebody just get a notice about okay, what? okay, so I just got a notice. It said classes are canceled at, at San Mateo, but it says Skyline stays open. It says okay. Skyline's open, so so I think we're good. Okay, I'll keep you guys posted. Yeah, all right, guys. Sure. So let me um, so let me switch to my um, <laughs> let me sh switch to my iPad. Yeah, and... All right, all right, there. So there we go. So yesterday I kind of ran through this, okay, and I had a couple of questions on it, and uh, you guys can see my whiteboard, correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, we talked about the three major pollutants, which are, oops which are HC, CO, and NOx. Okay, by now you guys should know what these acronyms mean. Okay, they're basically a scientific uh, notation for um, hydrogen and carbon, hydrogen, carbon, okay. Um, then CO, carbon, car carbon, and oxygen. And then NOx is nitrogen and oxygen, okay, so, um, we should, we should also know that, that since it's just an H and just a C, that is just one molecule, okay? Now, what I wanted to point out was, uh, does anybody remember 
if I have, if a vehicle has high CO, if it has high CO, what's the first thing that I should think about? Why does it have high CO? Because it's running rich. Because it's running rich. Excellent. Because it is running rich, period. Okay. Don't worry about it. Just, just, that's your, that should be your first thought. It's running rich. Okay. What's causing it to run rich? Can, can somebody give me an example? What would make a vehicle run rich? Too much fuel. Too much fuel. Like what? Improper give me an huh? air fuel mixture. Air fuel mixture oh, is incorrect. Sorry. Leaking injector. Leaking injector. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a common one. Okay. A leaking injector. That's a common one in today's automobiles. Okay. <laughs> because that's our basic fuel system right there. Right. So leaking injectors. Can somebody else give me maybe one other example that would give us a rich condition? Lack of airflow. Lack of airflow because of? Clogged air filter. Rare. Very good. Air filter, right? So you see on these, just these two small examples, you see both aspects of it. Because remember that a rich condition is, is a balance, right? It's a balance between air and fuel. And if we have too much fuel, like a leaking injector, we have a rich condition. If we, have, if we don't have enough air coming in, it's still, and, but we still, we have the, 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 the correct amount of fuel, but not enough air, it's still a rich condition, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a delicate balance, okay? So that's the easy one. That's the easy one to remember, okay? That, should we, that one we can knock out, okay? NOx, a little bit more uh, intriguing, okay? Just remember that, that NOx um, will start to produce at 20, about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The note in your book is, in, or the note in the, in, the, in the presentation was incorrect. It should be 2,500, 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when NOx, NOx is produced. And what happens is that we have nitrogen and it combines with oxygen. How does it combine? Well, when we have that 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, it basically cooks, right? It cooks it together. 2,500 degrees is unnatural anywhere. Right? We don't want 2,500 degrees. So at 2,500 degrees, we have, we combine nitrogen, which is already in the air and oxygen. Okay. All right. Moving on. And then hydrocarbons, that's the one, hydrocarbons is the one that can kind of give us a little bit of a headache sometimes, right? Let me see here. Okay, I'm getting better at this. Okay, so hydrocarbons, remember, um, what it would be a, what's one of the most common causes of hydrocarbons? You guys remember what I said? Uh, compression. Uh, could be, it could be a, a, a compression that's going to cause a what? If we don't have proper compression, we're going to, it's going to cause a misfire. misfire. Yeah. Very good. A misfire. Okay. It's going to cause a misfire. So the most common causes of hydrocarbons production or overproduction are misfires. Now there are three types of misfires. What are they? Someone just said one. Ignition, compression. Okay. Ignition is one. What's another one? Uh, too lean. A lean condition, right? And somebody said it earlier. Come on, I know you guys remember. Compression. Compression, very good. I was almost going to have a cup, drink of coffee. I was about to. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, compression, okay? So all of those are going to cause misfires, okay? And all of those are going to produce hydrocarbons. Okay. Now, how, uh, the other the other way that hydrocarbons can be produced is if I have what kind of uh, what kind of extreme condition. Hydrocarbons can also be caused if we have a what condition? Excessively rich. Right. Excessively rich. Thank you. I like the way you said that. Excessively rich. Right. So, the excessively rich condition. And I'll, I'll just write rich, and I'll go exclamation. Okay rich okay that'll also produce at well that's kind of confusing how, how am i going to know how am i going to know if the hydrocarbons are being produced by a rich condition and how am i going to know if the hydrocarbons are being produced by a misfire that's that's a whole lot of things to, to try to diagnose how, how can i uh how can i um figure this out what how can what, what can give me a clue what what can i look at anybody what other gas can I look at to consider this? The ox 
he said something about the oxygen in the video. That but is, I right, excellent. So oxygen. So if so, if I have hydrocarbons and oxygen, right, it's going to be one of these guys. Okay, it's going to be a, it's going to be a misfire by ignition, compression, or a lean condition. If I have if I have high, just hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide, then it's just a rich condition. Okay, everybody okay with that? That's how I can figure this out. Okay, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what, um, automotive diagnostic, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it is, it, like I said, in, in my opinion, the, the most fun and, and the most interesting, okay? And let me see here. Uh, we also, yesterday we talked about um, uh, computer circ uh, electrical circuits. I'm gonna leave that alone. You guys have an electrical assignment coming up in a week or so, so I'll leave that alone for now. Um, let me see here. So I wanna get to just the new lecture today because it's already 11 o'clock and I promise I get you guys out of here quickly. And today we're gonna look at vehicle emission control labels. <clears throat> uh, let me go here. Here we are. And oops, let me stop share like this. And go back over here. Right. Can everybody, can you guys see my, do you guys see the uh, PowerPoint presentation? No. No? No. Okay. So let me go back this way. And that and how about now? There we go. Yeah. All right. There. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So the underhood label. Okay. The underhood label. Okay. Um, uh, the or emission decal. Okay. It has several areas. Okay. That we need to consider. And this is the first area. It's called the the engine family area. Okay. Notice that it has the engine size. Okay. And it has this, and it has this designation here. This is important because when you guys are looking things up, any kind of information, okay, it's gonna, it's gonna, many times it'll refer to, okay, what engine does it have? Well, it has a 2.3. That's not enough. That's not enough. Many times it's gonna, okay, is it a, is it a 2.3? Uh, and then see this on the other, other side over here as well. Whoops, I'm sorry. See where it says a 2.3 BAG. That's that's the other designation, okay. So you have to make sure you have the correct engine. You will not believe how many times I work with students and with technicians and, 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 and I tell them, you're working on the wrong car. And like, what do you mean? You know, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, let them, I let them stew in that for a bit, right? I go, you're working on the wrong car. And, you're, and I tell them, you're never gonna fix this car. And I, and I close their book and I walk away <laughs> and they get irritated. What do you think I mean you're working on the wrong car? What do I mean when I say that? When, when, I, when I walk up to a student or a technician and, and, I, and, and, and I, look at, I look at what they're going through and I go, you're working on the wrong car. And I, and I, and I either close down their all data or I close down their book and I walk away uh, and, and, and it, it frustrates them, but it makes them think for a little bit. What do you think I mean by that? You're working on the wrong car. They might have the right car, but just a different uh, engine. The wrong, the engine or many times, it's the wrong year. Yeah. Many times it's the wrong series. Instead of an EX, it's an LX. And, and that makes a difference in the world. It has this option and not that other option. So I'm a stickler. I make sure I, I come from a GM background. And in GM, we have, you know, back in the day, we had eight different car lines, right? Um, you know, some of them went away now, but we had eight different car lines. And we had to make sure we were working on the right car. So I learned that early. And I see that many times. Technicians will be working on a vehicle. And just because it's an EX or, or, a, or an LX, you, you know what vehicles I'm picking on, um, or if it's uh, manual or automatic or, or it has the wrong engine, right? They punched in the wrong engine. They're, the wiring diagrams are going to be different. Everything's going to be different. So this is vital information. Okay? So the first area, area number one, is the engine family. Area number two is a certification. What is it? Is it, is, is it, a, is it a, uh, is it a California car? Do you, is this, is this a California car? What do you guys think? Is this a California no. car? No. No. no, it's not a California car. If it's a California car, it would say <laughs> California on the certification, right? It would say California somewhere on the certification. It does not. It's federal and Canada. Okay, federal and Canada. 
Now, what does that mean to us? Some people are under the misconception that because it's federal in Canada and if it comes to, you know, and it comes to, <laughs> and if it comes to California, we have to change the emission controls. No, we don't. But it has to, we have to, we have to uh, inspect it and, and make sure that we're, again, working on the right car. Okay, there's a federal in Canada. So it's going to be different. It's going to be slightly different than other models. Okay, uh, let me look at something real quick. Okay, so look, look here. Okay, it's federal in Canada. Now over here, you'll notice up on top, we're going to talk about this next. But up here, you guys see my, my, my uh, yeah. pointer? Yep. It says engine family. Okay. And then it says MFI, EGR, O2S, TWC, and then 2.2 liter. What are these guys? What does that mean? Those are um, like all the options that the engine has or? The options or, or the, the, the emission, emission controls, options. right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 the emission controls is that it has um, um, multi-port fuel injection. It has an EGR valve. It has an oxygen sensor and it has a three-way converter. If it was a California, let's say, okay, it might have like an additional converter. So it might be two, uh, three-way converter, and then it'll have a two, meaning it has two of those. Or since this is a 19, it's a 93, it, it might have uh, air injection, okay? So this is, this is the, where you find out the emission controls, the main emission controls that are, are supposed to be on this vehicle, okay? And that's gonna be, um, okay, so, so that's why it's important to, to find out whether what, what, what's this, if it's a federal or Canada vehicle. Okay. Um, so the third area, okay, is what I was just talking about, the, the emission controls statement. Right off the bat, it says this vehicle has a catalyst. In other words, it has a catalytic converter on it, right? And if we look up here, we know that it has, uh, it has an, it's EFI, which is electronic fuel injection, it has an EGR, it has an oxygen sensor, and it has a three-way converter. So because it just says three-way converter, we can assume it's only one, okay? Um, this is one of the exercises you guys are gonna be doing here uh, tomorrow, is you're gonna be looking at for emission control systems, okay? And you're gonna be doing a, a few other things, but one of the things you're gonna be doing. Also, by the way, typically, this is the week that you guys certify through all data, but since we're behind a little bit, we're, I'm, I'm gonna let it go to next week. Okay, so next week we'll be doing the all data certification. Make sure you guys get those assignments done. I just put another one up. I'm sure you guys saw it already or the, uh, the second page and that's a group assignment. Okay. Okay. Make sure you guys all join groups by today. Okay. So that's the third area is the uh, emission decal is the uh, emission control statement. Okay. Hang with me guys. Ruben. Questions, comments. What, what did you mean right now by, um, Make sure we all join groups today. What, what, what. Okay, so so the next assignment is a group assignment, okay? Mm -hmm. And you need to navigate. I uh, send a either announcement or an email, I, but I sent one of those out. Oh, that's another thing. Make sure you guys stay on your announcements and emails. Okay, this is how we communicate. I sent an announcement or an email, one of the two, I forgot, and uh, it stated that you guys would need to, the, the next assignment for all data certification is a group assignment. So you guys need to navigate to the people tab on your, uh, on Canvas. And then um, when, you, when you hit the people tab, it'll automatically um, have like group one, group two, group, there's gonna be four groups. And then you can uh, join whichever group you'd, you'd like. Uh, and that's gonna, be, that's gonna be your online lab group, okay? Out of those, out of that group, the four people that are at that group, two, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make two teams for the shop for each group, okay? So, um, so, so the, the, the NAPA, I'm sorry, the all data online assignment is gonna be a, a team effort, okay? Cause it's uh, about 60 questions long and it's not, and so, so you guys can divide that up by four, okay? And, um, uh, and they, it'll be a lot easier to tackle. So yeah, so the next assignment, it's a, it's a group assignment and that's gonna be due Friday, okay? And so and it's, it's already posted. And so are we, are we picking a certain car for that or? or no, uh, it, it um, yes, yeah, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, you, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can it's, it's up to you guys to pick whatever vehicle you want, I don't care. 
that you guys are doing it as a group. So, so you guys need to work together. Okay. Group assignments are worth 25% of your grade. So I expect you guys to work as a team. Okay. okay. And, and, yeah. and, and figure out, Hey guys, why don't we choose a, um, an, an older vehicle or let's choose a new, whatever you guys want. Okay. And then you guys pick it and you guys can just go through and, um, and it's, it's called a scavenger hunt because you're supposed to look for different things. Um, but it's 60 questions long. Okay. But again, if you break it up, uh, you guys will be looking at about 15 questions a piece. So that makes it easier. Okay. Um, uh, that answer your question memo. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. And okay. So that's area three. Then we look at Area four, okay, area four, typically your vacuum, uh, your em emission or vacuum decal, okay? Sometimes this can be separate. This is so important, okay, when we're trying to find components, especially components in the EVAP system. And if this looks like, like, a, like a crazy roadmap right now, don't worry. Most technicians still have trouble with this, okay? But I'll tell you right, right now is that if you're gonna be a, a good diagnostic tech, this is going to be your best friend, okay? Being able to being able to use this accurately, okay, um, is is very very important. Okay, so this is your vacuum diagram here. Um, when I was a technician, uh, especially when I when I went out for to work for the private sector, I worked at a smog shop for quite a number of years, and um, guys from other shops would send me the vehicles that they couldn't they couldn't figure out because back in the day. When I was a technician, like what year is this vehicle here? This is, uh, let me see, applicable to 2001. This is even newer than what some of the vehicles I worked on, but um, this is about when I became an instructor actually. So um, so vehicles like this, some, some technicians at smog shops, they couldn't figure out the vacuum routing. And the vacuum was so uh, complex that, that they, they would just give up and then they would ship them to my shop, okay? And I would charge them uh, flat rate hours as I went to, 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 we call it replumbing. Okay. I would replumb the vehicles for them and I would charge them at a flat rate. I would say, okay, um, give me uh, four hours of labor and, and, uh, and I'll, and I'll replumb this vehicle for you. Right. Um, now keep in mind back then labor was like 50 to 60 bucks. So it wasn't a great amount like it is now, but still. Okay. So vacuum diagrams. Okay. And then as it says here, the vacuum diagrams can sometimes be separate. Look at this vacuum diagram. Doesn't that look a little bit complicated? Okay. Um, the good thing is that now modern vehicles, right? Especially, you know, uh, vehicles that are only a few years old, very little vacuum lines, right? Very small amount of vacuum lines, not, not a lot, not that complicated. So that helps out a little bit. And then uh, this is another area, this, this one, this is another emission hose routing, okay? This one shows only the vacuum lines, which makes, which makes it kind of handy. Still area number four. And then we have uh, additional information, like, additional information like uh, here we have ignition timing, okay? Ignition timing tells you how, how you're going to um, adjust, uh, how you're going to, um, the procedure for ignition timing. Then here it tells us about um, other uh, services like, like uh, valve clearance, okay? It says engine cold, okay? Um, and it tells, gives us the valve clearance. So that's additional specification. So that's, that's just like the bone, we call that the bonus area, okay? doesn't have an area one, two, three, or four. It's just called the bonus area. And notice here, it also gives us, again, for setting timing. I know most cars today, we don't set timing anymore, but you guys need to learn this skill because of the smog check program. A lot of the things that we do in this class, other, other schools and other uh, classes don't do them because, because they are... Um, because they're not in the smog check program. Okay. We are, so, so we, we will, we will uh, learn these skills. Uh-oh, I froze up, I think. Come on. Or is it the end of the, 
I think it's the end of the road. Should be one more slide. Dang it. Yep, I think I froze up. Oh, there we go. This is definitely, I think. Okay, and again, this is just again more information. For example, here it says uh, dyno restrictions may apply. Okay, spark plug gap. And here we have um, certification. Okay, so if you see this, if you're working on, on a vehicle that has this certification, it has, the important thing about it is that it has 15 years or 150,000 miles of warranty. So we need to be careful when we work on these vehicles because 15 years, 150,000 miles, that, you know, that's quite a bit. We don't want to be fixing something that's covered under warranty because it'll come back to bite us. Okay? Mm -hmm. We always want to make sure if we think it might be under warranty, we need to advise the customer that it might be under warranty. Okay? Um, and then this is just a, a, a list of some of the things that are covered under, under warranty for uh, PZ vehicles. Okay. Okay. Um, there will be a, um, a, a quiz assign, assigned to this and you'll be able to, to review this, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this until I, um, until you guys get your manuals tomorrow. After you guys get your manuals tomorrow, there's going to be a quiz assigned for this. I'll put that up. Um, then tomorrow in class, I'm going to go over the vehicle identification number system. It's pretty short. So I'll do that. Um, look at that, two minutes over, not bad. Um, to, like I said, tomorrow I'll go over the uh, General Motors. I'll just give you a quick, quick preview. I know. Let me see here. Let me see. Here it is. So this is what we're going to cover tomorrow, and we'll do this in class. It won't take us very long. Um, and this is just the VIN identification system, okay? Um, I'm sure you guys know by now that you can find a lot of information on the VIN number, okay? Um, a couple... Two, two that are very important right off the bat are what? What, 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 what two numbers on here are, are very significant or what two digits that tell us something? What are they? The engine type. The engine type, very good, which is the eighth digit. Okay, and what else? Body type? No. Well, the year, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so the eighth and the tenth. Because the body type, uh, these can change from vehicle to vehicle, okay? So can the make, series. Th these can change. These can change from vehicle to vehicle. Um, I'm going to put a short video from a gentleman um, that did a really good job on breaking down a generic VIN system. I'll, put that, I'll, I'll, I'll post that so you guys can see that. But this is one of the things we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to go over this in class, okay? And then we're going to... Uh, do a lab assignment based off of this, okay? And then we're going to do also an assignment based off of the emission control systems. Um, and that should, that should um, wrap up uh, our day besides the safety um, and a few other things that we're going to get to do tomorrow. Um, I'll keep you guys posted. I, I'm hoping they don't shut us down at Skyline. Like I said, uh, Kenyatta, Kenyatta College and San Mateo just got shut down. Um, but not Skyline, so um, keep an alert. Thank you, Lauren. Last time that you you knew before I did the last, time. <laughs> I was like I, I was like this. He's trying to get out of going to the lab, and um, <laughs> but uh, why 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 would you right? That's probably the only yeah. part of this question. Exactly. Um, so uh, uh, so yeah. So if you guys hear about it, let me know. Um, but I will um, I will let you know as soon as I find out if if something's going down. If not, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, I will. Um, let me see. Okay. Go ahead and I'll leave this open for a while. So, I should be able to see all of you. 
Okay, so um, that's all I really got for you guys. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, stop recording now. That way, if anybody has questions or comments or needs to talk to me, they can. But um, I will stop recording.